This is a short paper called An Architecture of Cracks, Debris, Junk Space, and the Alethosphere for a symposium on architecture in the Alethosphere sponsored by the Institute for Psychoanalytic Studies in Architecture. My name is John Shannon Hendricks. The buildings that people build can represent the psyche of human beings. A crack in the orthographic hole of the psyche can be a reaction to the intolerability of the condition of human society, resulting in neurosis, paranoia, wish fulfillment, fantasy, sublimation, and a splitting of the psyche and its formation in language, science, and technology, the unconscious, and the demands of society. According to Sigmund Freud in Civilization and Its Discontents, the source of human suffering is the inadequacy of our methods of regulating human relations in the family, the community, and the state. The human being becomes neurotic because they cannot tolerate the degree of privation that society imposes on them in virtue of its cultural ideal. It is certain that our present-day civilization does not inspire in us a feeling of well-being, and when the most extreme forms of suffering have to be endured, special mental protective devices come into operation, fantasy, wish fulfillment, sublimation. Thus, each one of us behaves in some respect like the paranoic, substituting a wish fulfillment for some aspect of the world which is unbearable to him, and carrying this through into reality. <clears throat> Superstructure of language, rules, codes, science, and technology in society forms the unconscious of the individual, according to Lacan, as the big other, but entails a necessary alienation from conscious thought. According to Freud, <laughs> From pathology, we have come to know a large number of states in which the boundary line between ego and outer world become uncertain, or in which they are actually incorrectly perceived. Cases in which parts of a man's own body, even component parts of his own mind, perceptions, thoughts, feelings, appear to him alien and not belonging to himself. So the ego's cognizance of itself is subject to disturbance, and the boundaries between it and the outer world are not immovable. According to Lacan, language is a source of méconnaissance in the community of symbols into which the subject is inserted. In its participation in the big other, the ego misrecognizes its own unconscious, but is the unconscious which constitutes the ego, the imaginary function. The subject is eccentric to the ego, to its own mechanisms of thinking and does not know what it is. It is impossible for the subject to know itself given the dichotomy of the imaginary and symbolic, conscious ego and unconscious, orthopedic body image and language. The knowledge on the part of the subject of its unconscious is replaced by the illusions of consciousness, the mirage of the cogito, the thinking subject. The subject decenters itself in its commitment to language Science and technology are manifestations of the mechanisms of language, symbolic structures into which the subject inserts itself and through which the subject loses itself. <coughs> language itself is as a machine and that it detaches itself from the subject and objectifies the subject in its detachment. In language, in its objectification, the subject is fragmented and disconnected but the ego of the subject retains the virtue of alienated unity given by the gestalt image of the ideal ego in the mirror states. The subject is divided in language and further divided by the relation between language and the object, between the big other and the other object or person. Fantasy, the wish fulfillment caused by the objea, the object of desire, is represented by Lacan by an algorithm which is the desire of the alighted subject for the objet a, the plus de jouir, what is inaccessible to desire or wish fulfillment. Fantasy is the product promise of the subject of that which is unattainable in its existence and being, 
and it protects the subject from that abyss within itself. The condition of the object of the fantasy, the objet a, is a moment of a fading or eclipse of the subject that is closely bound up with the spell tongue or splitting that it suffers from its subordination to the signifier, according to Lacan. As soon as the subject enters into language, the attainment of the objet a is impossible. The objet a is the leftover produced when the subject enters a symbolic order. The object identification of the imaginary ego provides the subject with the stand and object of its desire in the illusion of consciousness in the ego in the symbolic order the unconscious robs the subject of the stand and object of its desire and the fragmentation of the body desire is the product of the impossibility of the imaginary in the symbolic the splitting of the subject between identification with the other person an identification in the big other, the cultural superstructure and the basis of the unconscious, the splitting in which the unconscious is formed, and the repression of desire is misrecognition, méconnaissance, which is the only recourse of the subject. The splitting occurs in the processes of language and metaphor and metonymy as the impossible representation of what the subject cannot know as itself. As Lacan writes in a Cree, it is the concrete incidence of the signifier and the submission of need to demand which, by repressing desire into the position of the misrecognized, <clears throat> gives the unconscious its order. Desire is maintained by language, as is the dehiscence of the subject and the possibility of the unconscious, and it is the nature of desire to be radically torn, the con says. The crack in particular as distinguished from the cut or the split, has entered architectural aesthetics in the last two decades, <coughs> beginning perhaps with Libeskind's Jewish Museum of Berlin in 2001. Other examples are the Cooper Union Building by Morphosis in 2006, and the Office Building in Aarhus by Seth in 2017. The cut or the split was a vocabulary element of deconstructivist architecture, reflecting the split in language between the signifier and signified. <clears throat> the cuts were smoothed over by parametric, epigenetic, and folded forms produced by the computer, but they have reappeared in the surfaces of those forms in the form of cracks, as in cracks in the epigenetic landscape of the psyche as envisioned by Freud. In Seminar 17 of Lacan, the alethosphere is the expanded big other, the cosmos of technology which forms a subject, fueled by science at the service of capitalism. The presence of science is manifest in the intersections of waves of which we are not aware. The alethosphere is the spheres or zones fabricated by science, the effects of formalized truth. Science is constructed out of nothing, its articulation only takes form in the signifying order. The lat houses, or latus, are the devices that populate the alethosphere, organs of extension everywhere, objects which are the cause of desire, the petit objet a, governed by science. Lat houses are the, quote, gadgets and things, as the con calls them, forged by science, in which science is objectified. Entering a relation with the lat house causes anxiety, the anxiety of the hysteric, and the subject is objet a, surplus en jouissance. The discourse of the hysteric creates the desire for knowledge, which results in its division and tearing apart. The hysteric is divided by the master signifier and is alienated from it. Knowledge occupies the place of jouissance beyond the pleasure principle, and the hysterics discourse. Surplus jouissance is found in the master's discourse, which is a product of the accumulation of capital and capitalism, which is tied to science and propelled by the university discourse. The discourse of the university represents the hegemony of knowledge, which guarantees the hegemony of science. The university student is the astude, or a studied, the objet a in the university discourse, or the discourse of science, the slave of the master's discourse. 
According to Freud, the root of all psychopathology is the Oedipus complex. In the Oedipus complex, the child realizes that he is marked by lack and is incomplete, and marked by, by anxiety because of the inadequacy of a real phallus, or lack thereof, which is a substitute for the mother's desire which the child cannot satisfy. <coughs> The father castrates the child and makes it impossible for the child to be the phallus for the mother. The prohibition of jouissance by the father or master signifier hides the impossibility of jouissance or of the objet a, the object of desire. The possibility of jouissance is a neurotic illusion, a product of a play of signifiers. Through the effect of the master's discourse, the male of speaking being disappears as a result of castration. The omnipotence of the male, which represents the jouissance of the female, is where man, when he speaks as a master, discovers that he is a failure, says the Khan. Castration is the deprivation of woman expressed in the failure of discourse, resulting in obsessional neurosis, hysteria, anxiety, paranoia, wish fulfillment, fantasy, sublimation, and a splitting of the psyche and its formation in language, science, and technology the unconscious, and the demands of society. What might be the visual traces of the alethosphere? At the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, imagine the prisons of Piranese in relation to the alethosphere. Vast, terrifying, sublime, and irrational, but all the product of human construction. The prison that the human race builds for itself, the prison of knowledge and technology, filled with instruments of torture and confinement and the billowing mechanisms of human ingenuity, which create an atmosphere of cacophony and distortion. In Learning from Las Vegas in 1972, Venturi et al. celebrated the proliferation, cacophony and distortion of the decorated shed, constructing a cosmos of excess, signifiers, kitsch, simulacrum, <coughs> hyperreality and junk space as defined by Coolhouse in 2006. The debris and residue of the human occupation of the planet, the product of the meltdown of science and modernization, where there is no connection between parts in a landscape of the orchestration of chaos, no matter how technologically advanced. The debris that occupies the architectural landscape is the product of multiple explosions of human civilization and the human psyche. War, violence, crime, technology, political conflict and oppression, reification and capitalism, economic imbalance, etc. The shards of the explosions coming from the alethosphere, the unseen cosmos of technology and information at the service of capitalism, are aesthetized in architecture's high art as a Gary's Fondation Louis Vuitton in Paris in 2014 and they are embedded in the very fabric of the human community. <clears throat> the alethosphere <coughs> and the built environment, which is a product of it, in the hegemony of the master's discourse, necessitate the impossibility of desire of the subject in language where the subject is torn. The lat house, the gadget, which is a product of technological advancement as the OJA, the substitution for desire is the only compensation. Desire for Lacan is caught in the dialectic of the imaginary and symbolic and rendered impossible as the subject is rendered impossible. The object which stands in for the objet a, the lack in the subject, might be the lat house object, the gadget to which the subject connects itself in order to be connected to the alethosphere, the big other, the inaccessible unconscious or might be a fetish object, like a work of architecture, or a collector's object, or money, commercial products in advertising, sexual fantasies, identification with collective beliefs like patriotism or racism. The object of the objet-a is the displacement of the subject or the other person and the big other in the form of culturally conditioned desires, such as style, fashion, music, architectural forms, a certain profession or activity, etc. In advertising, commercial products are often present 
represented as that which is unattainable. For example, Coca-Cola is the real thing, as pointed out by Zizek from the sublime object of ideology. The subject does not desire Coca-Cola. The subject desires the objet a, that which it lacks, which is the real thing, in the domain of the real, that which is inaccessible. The Lacanian subject desires as soon as it enters into language. Desire is not present in primordial imaginary experience prior to the mirror stage. Desire is the product of the murder of the thing by the symbol and language, as Lacan describes it, which instigates the lack experienced by the subject. The desire of the subject is thus the desire of the big other, <clears throat> and is also the desire of the other person in the dialectic of the symbolic and imaginary. This can be seen in the desire of the dream, which is not a conscious desire, not regulated by the unconscious ego. The dream enacts its own desire, which is the desire of the big other in the unconscious. In the same way, the conscious subject is the subject of the desire of the big other in language, rather than its originating agent. The subject is that which is represented by a signifier to another signifier in language, according to Lacan. <coughs> Consciousness is a construct of desire in the big other, which uses consciousness in its own regulation and concealment from the subject. In that the object of desire is a substitute for the objet a, the lack of the subject, the object is external to the desire of the subject. Desire is sustained by the subject and not by the object. The subject is an apparatus of absence in which the objet a is constituted. This, at, this apparatus is something lacunary, and it is in the lacuna that the subject establishes the function of a certain object, qua lost object, as Lacan explains in the four fundamental concepts of psychoanalysis. The object of desire is a fill-in for the lacuna in the subject, for the hole in the signifying chain which represents the subject. The desire of the subject is supported by fantasy. The fantasy is the support of desire. It is not the object that is the support of desire. The subject sustains himself as desiring in relation to an ever more complex signifying ensemble. As desire is desire of the big other, in the alethosphere, desire is socially engineered through the language of the symbolic. The subject does not want what it desires but desires what it thinks it is supposed to desire as a speaking subject in order to sustain itself in language. Thus, the object of desire, <coughs> in the usual sense, is either a fantasy that is in reality the support of desire, the reaffirming by the ego of the subject that it is desiring what it is, it is supposed to desire, or a lure, according to Lacan, the deception of the subject by its ego that the object is what it is supposed to desire, as in the La House. <coughs> the desire of the subject is divided in metonymy, which reaffirms the subject as that which is represented in language and at the same time eliminates the subject from that representation. Desire is both reaffirmed and negated by language because desire is constructed by language by the discourse of the big other, which is the unconscious, and in the master's discourse in science in the university, of the service of capitalism in the alethosphere. The subject is only partially existent in the big other and the alethosphere, and that's only partially existent in its own desire, which is inaccessible to it, as is the unconscious. The desire of the big other is that which links the signifiers in a signifying chain, and that which results in the elimination of the subject. The subject of Lacan is alienated from itself in signification. It is alienated from its own desire in language, by language. The subject, as in the Hegelian subject, is self-alienated in the doubling of its reason, in the doubling of the signifier which produces signification, and which institutes the objet a in language as a lack of the subject, the self-negation of the subject in reason, and of self-alienation in its language. As soon as the subject speaks, it desires and as soon as the subject desires, it does not know itself, and its méconnaissance is sustained by its desire. As soon as the signifier represents the subject to another signifier, 
the subject is alienated from itself and its desire. Alienation is linked in an essential way to the function of the dyad of signifiers, says the Khan in Seminar 11, the four fundamental concepts of psychoanalysis. As soon as the alienation is accomplished in the singular representation of the subject by a signifier to another signifier, the subject is eliminated from any further signification, which becomes self-enclosed and inaccessible to the subject. The subject cannot access that by which it is constituted. If we wish to grasp where the function of the subject resides in this signifying articulation, we must operate with two because it is only with two that he can be cornered in alienation. As soon as there are three, the sliding becomes circular, says Lacan. The alienation is accomplished with a binary signifier, as a signifier is that which represents the subject for the other signifier. The binary signifier is also the mechanism of the Vorstellung's representants of the dream. The representation which takes the place of the representation is the signifier which takes the place of the signifier, which represents the subject to it. The subject is alighted in the dream in the same way as the unterdrucken of the binary signifier. The subject is thus self-alienated from its desire in the dream as well, in its aphonesis or fading, which is a product of the Borstelung's representans, and the elision of the subject is a product of the binary signifier and conscious discourse, in which the mechanisms of the unconscious metaphor and metonymy determine the subject unknown to itself. The subject is unknown to itself in the big other and in the alethosphere, and it is the instruments of the lat house which sustain the illusion of the subject knowing itself and the substitution for desire in the objet a. The architecture of cracks, debris, junk space, and the alethosphere all function as fetish objects or substitutions for the unattainable desire and self-knowledge of the subject. They represent the subject to itself and the impossibility of the representation that which takes the place of the representation, the fetish object in the lat house. The fetish objects in the lat house participate in a signification which reveals that which cannot be signified, and the impossible desire of the subject reveals the non-existence of the subject. Desire is the mechanism of its own non-existence, as it is perpetuated by the illusion of object identification in the imaginary ego in the lat house, and the illusion of the consciousness of the subject and language and the symbolic, the big other, and the alethosphere.